Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome back to the Alpha for Warhammer 40k, Rogue Trader. As today, we go confront a short-sighted Farseer, possibly one of the masterminds behind the current chaos on the uh, crown jewel of the Valencius Trade Empire. Now, I have already looted all the bodies. Um, they vanish between saving and reloading. And uh, it's mostly what you'd expect, a lot of filler stuff, and a couple of choice pieces of Eldar gear, though nothing I think we'll use. I was hoping we could use the armor, but tragically, that is Eldari only. Which means that Yurliet is literally the only character in the party who can actually use it. Which I guess is fair, considering that um, it is hands down superior to our standard Light Enforcer carapace. Aside from that, while I was looting, I also noticed there is a very well-concealed hidden path up here, which I only noticed because I looked at it on the map screen. Just looking at the terrain, you can't even see that path. I mean, you can kind of make it out once you know it's there, but that is very clever. That said, we'll uh, clear the camp down here real quick, grab whatever loot's still in containers, check out these inspection points, then we'll pop up top, see what we almost missed. In the dimness under the canopy, you notice the outlines of machines, portable generators that provide power to the camp. Some of the machines have fallen into disuse, and it would be impossible to make sense of the cables and wires strewn about the floor without the help of a tech priest. Crack grenade? We'll take that. The floor of the bunker is littered with sleeping bags, backpacks, and rebels' meager belongings. Clothes smeared with blood, primitive data slates, and half-eaten Nutrivars. <laughs> it's like a college co-op in here. We'll refrain from going any deeper in the jungle just yet. We don't want to accidentally confront Moran before we, uh, we find everything there is to find. Interesting. We've got more stuff down below, but we'll worry about that a bit later. And we can't get to the ship. That's kind of a bummer. One crack grenade and some general filler cargo. Let's check up top. I did deliberately avoid exploring this area after I noticed it, trying to keep as much of this a surprise as I can. And we've got more rebels. D dare we approach these? Will we actually be able to talk this time? Hello? I come in peace. Kind of. When was the last time you saw Cab? Hold on, brothers. I'll call for backup. Well, great. I guess we're killing everyone. Again. Smoke grenade. That's cute. Though it does actually severely limit our cover options. Sharpshooter. No good shot on him. That night was the last time. Right after he went outside the perimeter, he was gone. Ran into some piece of shit in the dark, I bet. Oh, he's continuing the... 
kind of a slow reaction time there, but yeah, he's um, finishing the conversation that we walked in on. Which implies we could have eavesdropped on these guys to gather intel. Man, now I wish I'd done that. I wish I'd done that down below, too. I didn't even think to stop and wait when we saw all those rebels. Not that I suppose it really would have made a difference. Excuse me, I was using that. Oh, thank you. And thank you. All right, we'll do this without cover then. Fair enough. Enough for a running gun. Watch and learn. Nicely done. Get out of here. Adira. What is this foreboding? I guess it doesn't really make a difference. We've pretty much won this already. happened. Yeah, yeah, this fight was like 95% mooks. The sharpshooter's the only elite on the field. So this is barely even a warm-up. Though that one guy did run off for backup, so maybe we're not actually quite done yet. Sailing away. Let's see to it. saw that and we're done 
We have uh, made quite the impression on the rebels thus far. No backup showed up, but I can't imagine that guy running to tell people we're here will will help us moving forward. I'm guessing that hunting rifles are real prize here. Okay, okay, looks like a pretty standard marksman rifle variant. Inflicts plus two damage on bigger creatures. I guess we could give this to Cass, but it's rare that we actually take a shot with her. Usually she's just leadershipping it up. Oh, wow, there's actually a fair few differences here. Uh, hunting rifle damage is higher, but penetration is lower. Range is lower. Max ammo is lower. But it does gain that extra damage against bigger creatures. So double damage boost over the standard marksman. Yeah, yeah, we'll uh, give it a shot. The pad is speckled with black tracks and scratches. Judging by the evidence of landings and takeoffs, flying machines land here on a regular basis. It could be one of the local types of shuttles. Okay, very vague. Free multi key. Yeah, I'm not really sure what to make of that black marks clue. The Xena ruins visible from under the green canopy look remarkably intact. It seems time and the elements have no power over this bright material. Free las gun in a pool of blood at the foot of a scalable cliff. I could make it. Yikes, Heinrichs. Take it easy there, buddy. Remember, innocence proves nothing. This poor sap was clearly mauled by a large predator, but you don't see any signs that the creature gorged itself on his flesh afterwards. It appears the beast did not kill this man out of hunger. Right, yeah, I mean, we already know about the flora and fauna turning feral. Oh. And we've got more faces on the ground. Slightly more defined this time. We'll have to stay on our guard. That guy might have actually been killed by Chaos Spawn. The plant's outer tissue is stretched and cracked from the swollen pulp underneath. Murky ichor oozes from the long tears. The touch of Silent Thresh has disfigured the Lalathan down to the smallest of her children. How deep does the corruption run? Victory awaits. Oh. More corpses. This Vox Tower was assembled from parts clearly not intended for such use. Among the support beams and plasteel sheets, you see arches from containers and fasteners from agri-cisterns. 
Oh, I wonder if this is the guy who ran to call for backup. Which would imply that whatever killed him is still around. A new challenge for me? Okay, looks clear. Hunter's Carapace. 3 deflection, 40 absorption, 25% dodge penalty, plus 1 MP. Not terrible. Though I'm not sure any of our current characters actually use medium armor. Maybe Heinrichs? Uh oh. Um, hi there! These creatures were once so timid, so reticent. Could the seed of evil truly have taken root in them as well? Not our biggest concern right now, Yurliat. How many foes have you in Lantuck? Oh boy, well they they are right on top of us, aren't they? Sorry, sorry. Gotta watch that friendly fire. Oof. Oh my goodness. Okay, hold on now. Hold on. We've gotta buy ourselves some room quick. There we go. Okay. Thankfully, these things do seem to be fairly fragile. High damage, low durability. get bulwark up Battlefields are always drowned in scarlet Oof painful but worth it Sorry, Pascal. I really thought you were out of line of fire, but I guess not. That's fine. He's really just... Oh my goodness. Um... Heinrichs, I'm going to need a little help here. Nothing stands against me. Oh, come on. For the throne is yours. Okay, okay, we'll take that. We'll take that. Pescal's about to drop, but that's fine. I basically just propped him up to serve as a a speed bump. Just need to buy time. <sighs> if I must. 
I am not your Xenos pet, monkey. Hey, Pascal, you get to do a thing. Good luck. I believe in you. They who discern the future on the battlefield. These guys are dodgy, so. On it. We'll do. What an unfortunate turn of fate. That'll do. So that's what that feeling was about. Oof. Pascal and Rat down. But we are good. Man, <laughs> man, oh man. That was intense. I'll lay claim to the stars. And look at that. They even knew we were going to need some new med packs. That is appreciated. It's funny because uh, I had actually deliberately tucked us into that back corner under the assumption something would block the path leading back out. You know, trapping us in the dead end clearing. But uh, it didn't quite play out that way. The enemies came out of the foliage and... We're right on top of us. But uh, it did make for a fun fight. I mean, harrowing, but but definitely fun, especially after the last couple of easy fights. It's nice to have a tough one every once in a while. None shall stand in my way. The Inquisition taught me many things. Okay, let's push on. Confront this moron. After we grab this random case we saw over here. Ooh, tripwire. Two tripwires. Oh, nice. Free grenade. Man, um, I didn't realize you could actually salvage components from disarmed traps. That makes it kind of a shame we can't salvage landmines. It would be fun to toss down proximity mines during combat. Ergo boots. Ergo boots. Very light, yet sturdy, and perfectly fitting. Agility plus 5, athletics plus 10. Which, given the sheer volume of cliffs we're currently running into, seems like a good upgrade. And then we'll toss the hand-me-downs to Rhett, I think. Yes, very nice. That's a solid upgrade. Definitely worth the, the detour. Oh, did I miss something from Pascal? No, no, you know what? That might have actually been whatever he was saying when he unlocked the chest. All right, moving on. I 
won't tolerate weakness. Rebels. Non hostile. Need to investigate. Traps and dead beasties. satisfied with the performance of the mysteries of maintenance for your equipment although some of your prayers are unfamiliar to me this cannot be they are rites performed by the imperial night pilots of my world i must commend you on the delicacy with which you expressed your suspicion that I was deviating from dogma. Oh, you too. Always with the hijinks. The runes form the lines of an ancient Xeno poem that tells of the creation of a Lalathan, of turning a lifeless dead world into a blooming garden. Well, certainly backs up. Your Liette's claim. Operation. Successful. Though I suppose the ancient Eldar ruins did that too. <laughs> the premonition runs true. This plant, once a harmless shrub, is now completely changed. Its outer tissue is cracked from the juices swelling in its pulp and now oozing down the leaves in murky rivulets. The mutation looks like the result of some powerful sorcery. Are we going to fight a giant plant? It does seem to be where they're going with this. In the back of the corpse's head, there is a strange narrow hole that does not look like it came from any conventional Imperial weapon. A hole like that could have been left by a thin blade piercing the skull. Huh. Thin blade. Gotta say, that feels like Dark Eldar to me. Those guys are like 60% blades. We also got some recoil gloves, minus 20% recoil. Which is a great fit for Rhett, but he will have to lose the Grox Bracers. Which I guess is fine. He only really benefited from those half the time anyway. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we don't really have any other rapid-fire characters in our party now. It was basically Jay Hadari and Argenta, and we phased both of them out. Come on, buddy. Ow. Hey, here we go. Data slate with notes. Kurt, I know it's been rough for you since the meeting by the ruins. First contact leaves an impression on everyone, but when I recommended you to the commander, I never thought you wouldn't have the stomach to process the truth. Think what you want, but I'm still your friend. I don't want anything to happen to you because of your own stupidity. I saw your bag with the packs of Nutribars that our lads brought from the settlement. And if you thought no one would notice a couple of clips missing from Torben's backpack... You thought wrong. I want to give you a chance. Return the goods. You know every Nutribar counts these days. The stuff that grows in the forest is no longer edible, and we're in need of weapons more than ever. I can guess why you need all this. You want to split, abandon our cause, go back home and pretend nothing happened. But I'm not writing this to appeal to your conscience. I just want to say that you're a marked man now, Kurt. 
After meeting the higher-ups, cutting and running is the worst thing you can try to do. They're watching those who've seen them. They won't let you leave. Let's talk. Just talk, you and me, in private. Let me know when you're in camp. Which, I guess from context, means that our submerged friend down below with a hole in the back of his head is, in fact, Kurt. Poor guy. I think Kurt's the guy they mentioned back on the landing pad, too. We might be able to use this when we confront Moran. Lacerax's. Lacerax's. Wow, they went right for the softest targets. Let's take them out. Thankfully, we're in a much better position this time than we were up top. Eh, good enough. Still got her out of there. You just let yourself go to pieces. Have you no pride? Pay attention. Oh, tripwires. And we can see a bunch of ruins just ahead of us. This this is promising. I rise to the occasion. The massive statue depicts one of the gods of the Eldari, an ancient Xenos race that once inhabited vast regions of the galaxy. This giant ravenous creature is covered in spikes and bone growths. Here we go. Here we go. Let's uh, hang back for a second. See if we can do any eavesdropping. Oh yeah, right there. You know, I keep looking at it, but I still have no idea what it's made of. It 
Looks like some kind of bone. Except I can't even imagine a living thing that size, let alone believe it exists. Figure we could uh, try sawing it open. What if there's something real valuable inside? Don't. I saw what our friends did to the idiot who thought it'd be a good idea to piss on one of those stone faces. You don't want to be that guy. Right. Well then. Oh my. Uh, hi there. The tall being in a fine, long garment turns to you, their face hidden behind the blank visor of their helmet. When they begin to speak, even from a distance, you feel the air around the figure grow cold. Monkey, you should not be here. Yurliette strides forward, her eyes flashing. Moron, I am calling you to account. The robed figure inclines their head, and then they begin to speak. Yurliette the outcast, you left the path that was set out for you. You brought unknown Monke to our refuge, and now you speak to me with unseemly anger. State your reason. You said that the great danger threatening the Lalathan lurked in the hearts of the Monke, in their greed and ignorance, and all the while another enemy was looming over this world, an enemy whose tracks you should have seen in things to come. Silent Thresh, she who thirsts is threatening this world, and you hid it from us. Answer me, did you or did you not behold our greatest foe in the Lalathan's future? Did you lie to me? After Yurliat's words, the tall figures surrounding Moran stir into action. One looks around at the Farseer, while others let out exclamations muffled by their helmets. If Yurliet's words had an effect on Moran, he does not show it. Yurliet the outcast, you speak of things you know nothing about. Your long wanderings far from the Kruderach have altered your mind and tainted your sight. Yeah, probably best to hold back. My wanderings are the path I have chosen for myself. Far from the walls of Kruderach, I have seen and come to know things that no other Aldari could, hidden away in a craft world their entire life. Why do you deny my words about Silent Thresh? Is it because you were lying to me and my kin when you showed us the true path? For centuries, Kruderach followed the ways of the Farseers, those who are endowed with the power to dispel the darkness of ignorance and point to the true path. For centuries, I did everything to ensure that Kruderach lived and that its children lived. And today you, you, the outcast, accuse me of lies and treachery, with no mention of your own sins. Your duty was to preserve the peace and the life of the Monke ruler, but instead you are standing before me, bringing our enemies along with you. This Elantek was the first person to discover the coming of Silent Thresh, one of those whom the Monkei call Chaos Gods. Without him, I would still be deceived by your words about destiny and the true future. Now that the veil of omissions and evasions has been ripped away, I am calling you to account, Moran. Tell me, why did you avert our gazes from the true threat, instead directing all of our anger at the Monkei? Monkei revealing paths. It's ludicrous. Monke bring pain and strife, in our time and for all time. How can you trust a Monke after what we taught you, after hearing the sorrowful song of the dying world? Moran turns his head toward you. It was not chance that brought Kruderach down. Monke destroyed our ancient home, stripped us of our defenses, doomed us to wander amidst the cold stars. And his reason slips out. This is all about revenge, to the point where he lost sight of all else. 
Well, you know, that was before my time, but based on what I'm saying here, I would imagine that if the Imperium did destroy your planet, you gave them ample reason to do so. The Eldar chuckles, his voice turning venomous. Or it could be that your uncontrollable hunger to destroy everything in your path reigns over your every thought and deed. You are playing with words and avoiding the question. Notes of desperation and rage are creeping into Yerliette's voice now. The Lalathan is under threat from our eternal foe, and yet you're more concerned about the presence of the Elantech than the corruption that is flowing through the veins of this world. Did you never consider that your war might simply be hastening Silent Thresh's triumph? Perhaps the ruler's servants, in their efforts to protect her, will resort to more and more instruments of corruption. Moran drops each word as if it were a heavy stone. I choose the true path for you and your kin. Just as farseers have chosen the paths for the Kruderok in centuries past. The path reveals itself to a chosen soul. Doubting the path only shows the weakness of those who question it. You should have yielded to your duty, but instead you cast it aside coming here at the Mung K's behest. Just as you cast aside the customs of Kruderok and ran away from your duty there. Silent Thresh's traces permeate the entire universe, so it is no surprise that this world also bears her mark. But even if it is true, the Mung K are the true enemies of the Lalathan. The destiny that governs me tells me so, and that is what I am telling all of you. Erliette is silent for several moments. I used to think that traveling beyond the limits of Kruderok would bring me wisdom and knowledge that would be valued by my kin from the craft world. But I was wrong, and today I am paying for it. Not for my choice, but for the intransigence and narrow-mindedness of my kin. Moran leans down over Yerliette, his tone menacing. You left Kruderok in our darkest hour to gratify your ego. You came to us on the Lalathan, and I accepted you as one of our own. I even gave you a real purpose, Yerliette the Outcast. And you dared to insult me, a Farseer? It was a mistake to let you into our circle. You have turned our efforts to survive into dust with your own hands. I am a child of Asurion, Moron, not a plaything in the cold hands of fate, which you claim speaks through your mouth. My choice of path is no worse than yours or any other Aldari's, and my path calls me to fight our true enemies, not eradicate the Monke. If it comes to it, I will stand with them, for this Elantech can see what you are blind to, Farseer. Yerliette's eyes are alight with fury. She pointedly lays her hand on her weapon, looking away from the Farseer. If I might interject, it is my duty to protect my worlds and my vassals. If Janus is under threat by the forces of chaos, then I will fight to the end, to stop it. The words of a creature whose will is ruled by momentary whims. There is nothing you can do to make me believe in the strength of your convictions. You speak of the strength of one's convictions, Moran? You claim it is your destiny to protect your kin. So then, what happened to the Aldari you sent to the Monkey ruler before me? The Aldari whose skull is now kept as a Monkey trinket. That was the previous envoy you sent, wasn't it? Did you see the same fate for me in your visions? His fate was to serve Kruderok, the spirit of our craft world that keeps the Asuriani alive. Your destiny is to do the same, Yerliette, the outcast, as long as you aren't planning to transgress our laws again. Listen, if this world is in serious danger, there is no sense in us fighting each other. Let us deal with our common foe, together. Then we can kill each other. The name of that danger is Mung K, and I will seek to it that the Lalathan is purged of those defiling her face. Then again, there is one way to prove to me that the Mung K truly do care 
about the well-being of their captured world. Eliminate the ruler of the Monke sojourning on the Lalathan, and relinquish the governing of this world to me and my kin. The Lalathan herself will stand as surety for our agreement, as will your compatriots who live on it, and the profit that you will gain by tilling the Maiden world. Moran tilts his head to the side. Our human helpers will replace the leaders of the Monke. We will be the ones who govern the Lalathan from the shadows. Uh, I don't know about that. I mean, I do like the diplomatic approach, but I feel like actually just straight up giving an Imperial world back to Xenos might not go over particularly well with, with, you know, the Imperium. I'm sorry, that's simply not possible. It would be the death of us both. It is not my intention to have my brothers and sisters sit on the council, Mung K. That role will be played by humans. You may choose whomever you wish for this task, as long as they remember who stands behind them and heed our direction. Moran says nothing for a few moments, then adds mockingly, I suppose my demands can be considered a gift for the likes of you. You could not wish for anything better than Aldari stewards to rule over Mung K without bloodshed. Okay, well now I just kind of want to shoot you in the face, but um, I'll tell you what. Counteroffer. I can't give you Janus. The Empire would discover what we were doing and they would destroy us all. But I can let you live here, which I feel is a slightly better arrangement than me simply killing you now and then going to take care of the governor on my own. A heavy silence falls between you and the assembled Aldari. Finally, Moran tilts his head. I am not willing to risk my brother's lives, Mon K. I will steal my soul and try to believe your promise. Hey, good for you. Erliette shakes her head. The governor must die, and she must be replaced by new rulers. One's not corrupted by the touch of she who thirsts. We must return to Vistenza Viat and put an end to the taint that has afflicted the Lalathan. On that we agree. But what of after, once the governor has been dealt with and the Lalathan is safe? I think it's quite clear that you don't fit in here with your kin, Yerliette. I'll be leaving the planet shortly after my business here is complete, and I would not be adverse to bringing you along. Well, Helen Tech. Retcon traitor, yes? I am tired of titles and designations, my own and others. Since your path lies beyond the limits of the Lalathan, I will go with you to search for others of my kind scattered among the stars. Perhaps they will greet me more warmly than this brood. Fantastic. Welcome aboard. And situation resolved with nary a shot fired. I mean, aside from the, like, 50 people we killed on the way here, but who's counting? Bogle. I guess that must be the rebel leader, like the human leader of the rebels. Interesting. I do wonder if there was supposed to be some way we could have gotten the human rebels to turn on the Aldari. Because they did seem to give some clues, some general details about how we might be able to drive a wedge between them. But we didn't really see much in the way of prompts, but that could be because of other choices we made prior to arriving here. Such as, of course, wiping out so many rebels and... Uh, letting Yurliette take the lead when we were negotiating with Moran. It's also possible that we could have really swayed things if we had immediately removed Viat from power the second we landed, because we did have that option. Not to mention um, other small bits and pieces here and there of our interactions, such as discovering the skull of that previous envoy, that obviously gave Yurliette slightly more ammunition when she was arguing with Moran. That said, we're past time, so uh, this feels like a good place to call it. 
We'll hit the pause button for now. I'll clean up our inventory, maybe poke around a little just to get a better idea of what we have left to do here. And we will pick up here next time. As we chat up the Eldar, the Rebels, grab anything that's not nailed down, and then set our sights on the Governor. Head back and uh, check on the estate of things. See you then! Oh, and uh, special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. Including, but not limited to, Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracket, Theory V23, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatleave, James Tremay, Kazorm, Mark Diemza, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Pietkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, if you would also like to support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things. Trust me, it does make a difference. Or you could even check out the PayPal, the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description. Operation successful.